okay, we have one thing left to do, and that is to create a playbook and actually execute the playbook in our network automation system. So, and in Ansible. So let's go, let's go do that final step. Now there's a couple of things I wanna talk about very quickly. Uh, what I'm about to show you is not gonna be fully explained down to the detail. You got some of that in the very first video at the top of our page that explained a little bit about Ansible. Um, we will cover the details of what's going on here, uh, obviously in the course, but I wanted to get, you know, those of you who are experimenting with this and just wanna play with it, get you going right away with your first playbook. So the first thing I wanna talk about is documentation. There's a ton of documentation. So let's go to the web browser here and let's go to the website where the documentation is. This is the Ansible uh, documentation, docs.ansible.com. And there you go, ton of information here. There's the Ansible doc documentation itself. Uh, so please refer to this to look up any of the things that you might be curious about that I uh, actually demonstrate here. Okay, let's go back to our screen with the GNS3 project. All right, so what we're going to do here, if you recall in the prior video, uh, we have our network automation appliance. Uh, if we do an LS, we did create a very simple Ansible configuration. We also created a hosts file, right? So if I cat the hosts file, you can see I've created a group called GNS3 routers, and I put router one, two, three, and four in that group. Now that's gonna be used in our playbook, as you will see. Now playbook files are special files. Um, I have actually created one and it will be available to you. You can actually download this little file that has this exact playbook already typed out so you don't have to copy it. Um, and the reason you would wanna do that is that this is extremely sensitive to spacing. So Ansible files always start with the three dashes and then the amount of spacing and where things are located is critical to have these playbooks work. They are in what we call YAML format. So you see here, I've created this file called playbook1.yml or YAML for short. We called this install OSPF. So that's what our playbook's gonna do. It's just gonna automate the function of installing OSPF across all of our routers, routers one, two, and three. And the way we know that's gonna happen is because you can see that we're using the GNS3 routers at that group to be the hosts that we're going to impact with this playbook. Now there are variables, okay? Um, and you can see here I have a username student and password CSI123. That's gonna be critical to access each of the systems. Remember Ansible just uses SSH. And then we have some tasks. And there can be many, many tasks in a playbook. But again, to get you going here, we just wanted to start simple. So we've got this task that we call enable OSPF. You can see it's using the iOS configuration engine. Uh, think of this as a, a part of Ansible that, that knows how to do this stuff once it's given the right variables and so forth. Uh, you can see we're gonna say router OSPF1, and you can see we're going to configure network 0000, 000 with the 255, 255, 255, 255 mask. Um, in, in area zero, okay? So basically, OSPF will be configured on all of the routers when we run this, okay? So how do we get this file in as an actual playbook? Well, what you wanna do is back here on the, the uh, command line interface to the network automation appliance, what we're gonna say is nano, and we're gonna create this file called playbook1.yml. And that file doesn't exist at this point. Um, in fact, let me, let me show you that very quickly. If I do an ls, right, there's no file there other than the configuration and the hosts. So again, nano playbook1.yml, that's what we will call it. And that will put us in the editor. Now what I'm gonna do is just cut and paste this entire thing. 
So copy and paste. And there we go. Right? That has been pasted in to the editor. So let's just save this. And now if we do a ls, we can see that the playbook has been added as a file. There it is, YML. So the file is in there now, and it is ready to actually be executed. Now let's check on a couple of things, right? If I go to R1, if I say show IP protocols, there are none. There's no routing protocol running at this point. Same thing with router two. No routing protocol. Nothing in router three and nothing in router four. So nothing up my sleeves here at all. Now to execute this playbook, we have to issue a special command. Okay, what we're gonna say is Ansible playbook, and we're just gonna give it the name. So we'll say playbook one dot YML. Now, when I hit enter here, Ansible's gonna do its thing. It's going to look at the commands, like these over here that are part of the, the YAML file, and it's going to execute these commands against that group of routers called GNS3 routers. We could have specified the host. We could have said R1, R2, R3, R4. We could have done that up here, but it's, it's easier to use groups like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this. And you can see the play called install OSPF is running. And then a bunch of stuff scrolled by. So let's go back up a little bit and take a look at what happened. Okay, so we can see that the enable OSPF task, which was right here, this was executed on router three, router one, router four, and router two. Now, we don't see the whole SSH process. It's not necessary. We know that's going to work. So those were executed. There was some debug output, and it's showing us exactly what it did to each router. It also got an OK message for each router. So in the end, in the play recap, we see R1, R2, R3, and R4 all got changed. Okay? So the changes were applied to each of these routers, and it, it happened without any errors. So let's go look at the routers, right? Uh, oh, well, you can already see a little bit here that you see OSPF adjacencies coming up here. So again, if I do a show IP protocols, right, we now see that OSPF1 is indeed running. Same thing with router two, we see adjacencies. Show IP protocols, looks like OSPF is good. Router three, we see OSPF has been installed. And then of course, router four. So very, very quickly, we went across all four routers and configured OSPF. You can imagine if you had a network of 100 routers or 1,000 routers, how simple this would be to now execute a command across all of these routers. And that's really where the power of Ansible comes in. Now, just for fun, let's try to break this a little bit. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna run the playbook again, just to show you what happens when something is already configured. YAML, the YAML file is still the same. We haven't made any changes, but Ansible is smart enough to figure out when it needs to make a change and when it doesn't. So here we go. Again, the play is executing, it's executing the task. And what you can see is nothing was changed. All four routers already had the configuration, so Ansible did not change anything. So it's very smart, watch this. I'll go to router two here, and let's say configure terminal, no router OSPF, whoops. So I've taken out OSPF. Of course, the adjacencies are going to break. I'll say end. And let's go do router three as well. And there we go. All right, so they obviously OSPF is gone in these routers. Now let's go back and run the playbook yet again. 
So here we go. Ansible is doing its thing. And I don't know if you noticed that, but right away at the top, it said that routers one and four were okay, didn't need to make any changes. And then it changed routers two and three. And of course we get the debug output as well as the summary, the play recap here, where we see that the, the two routers, routers two and three were indeed changed and no changes were made to router four. So there you go. I hope this gives you a really good understanding, albeit very, very simple, with your perhaps first playbook for Ansible and how easy this is to execute across dozens and dozens of routers if we had to. Um, now, there's a lot going on, of course, in the exact you know, methodologies being used and so forth and how to configure Ansible. There's tons and tons of options. Again, I gave you the link to the documentation. If you want to learn Ansible and, it, and if you want to get your head completely around this network automation process, we would love to see you in one of our classes. Thanks for watching.